You can now get a 30-day trial to experience The Athletic for free. Visit the link in the description below to try it now. After the ninth round of Premier League fixtures, Manchester United ranked 14th for the volume of goals and expected goals that they had conceded this season. Prior to beating Tottenham, they have kept only one clean sheet in 20 games across all competitions, a record which was worst amongst all Premier League teams. They also hadn't kept a clean sheet at Old Trafford since April the 15th, against Granada in the Europa League. And the last time they kept a clean sheet at home in the Premier League was against West Ham United on March the 14th. So United's defence is a problem. But what's going wrong? Well, firstly, it's useful to look at their approach out of possession. When United have played in a more compact shape and employed a counter-attack under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, they've had a great deal of success. However, this season they are simply too easy to play through. Using data from StatsBomb via FB Ref, we can look at the location of the pressures that United have made. Solskjaer's men are actually about league average in the proportion they make in the attacking third, with nearly a quarter coming in the area of the pitch. Nearly half the pressures United make are in midfield, which is not uncommon. However, there are a few too many occasions where those pressures feel more reactive than proactive, after the opposition have broken through the attacking line too easily. Not having a high-pressing style does not necessarily mean the team is poorer at defending, though. However, what was worrying was Solskjaer's declaration of United's defensive approach against Liverpool in his post-match interview. We're at home, we're playing against Liverpool, we've come here over the last two and a half years and had a similar approach, to go press high. I think at Man United we should always try at home to go and stamp our authority on the game. So the intention was there, but the execution wasn't. Just 11% of the total pressures made by United were in the attacking third. Now, typically, teams will either stay compact out of possession, or if they do press, do it with speed and as a team. Unfortunately, United did neither. Their running might have constituted a pressure within the numbers, but qualitatively, they were certainly too slow in the press. The first goal conceded against Liverpool is a damning example. Starting with Virgil van Dijk in possession, Mason Greenwood ran towards him without hurrying his decision-making or blocking any passing angles. Greenwood did then run towards Andy Robertson, with more intent to block off a return pass to van Dijk, but is not really intense in the press and with Aaron Wambasaka miles away in getting close to Robertson as he receives the ball. Now, this hardly looks like a pressing trigger where United's teammates squeeze the pitch to close the space. Robertson then played a fairly easy ball to Diogo Jota, with Wambasaka by then very high up the pitch without performing any valuable defensive action. Meaning that Victor Lindelof, United's right-sided centre-back, had pulled very wide to cover, thereby exposing the back four. As Jota played the ball inside to Firmino, the space the Brazilian had between the lines was huge, with seven United players in Liverpool's half when Jota receives. With Scott McTominay and Fred already on the wrong side of Firmino, the Brazilian actually has an easy pass onto Mohamed Salah, beyond Harry Maguire. And you can also see how deep Luke Shaw is. While he was given a tough task of tracking two Liverpool players, if he'd tried to keep a higher line with his centre-backs, then Salah and Naby Keita may have been offside. As it transpired, Shaw was then given the impossible task of stopping Salah and Keita on his own, which of course he was unable to do. And all too many times you see United players running back towards their own goal with the opposition in behind. As Salah plays Keita through on goal, Liverpool's number 8 slots it in past David De Gea, but look at United's back four, who are more along a vertical plane than they are across a horizontal one. It's a mess, and this has been a pattern that has developed in the early stages of the season. Teams were getting chances through United's midfield all too easily, which was leaving the defence exposed. However, it's not just the goals that stand out, as United have been given warning signs from chances that hadn't led to them conceding. Many of the issues described appeared vividly in the loss to Leicester City, and regularly at other points during the season. But returning to the numbers, United's passes per defensive action, PPDA, serves as a proxy of their pressing intensity, which backs up the eye test. Through the first nine Premier League games, Solskjaer's side were allowing the opposition to make 13.6 passes on average before making a challenge, which ranks as the 12th highest pressing intensity in the league this season. 
Over time, with a 10-game rolling average, you can see that there has been a steady decline in their pressing intensity dating back to the final third of last season. And it's alarming. Separately, Captain Harry Maguire has also been criticised. It would appear that the 28-year-old is not operating at the peak of his powers, but a closer look would suggest that Maguire has not dropped off his output dramatically. His 3.1 true tackles this season, which includes tackles plus challenges lost plus fouls committed, is as many as his previous campaigns, and his success rate in the tackle, 60%, and in the air, with a 77% aerial win rate, is as high as ever. However, it's revealing how often he is engaging in more proactive front foot defending, which reads the play and stops the attack developing at source. His 1.0 true interceptions per 1,000 opponent touches, which includes interceptions and blocked passes, are significantly lower than previous seasons at United, and the volume of aerial deals he's engaging in is also the lowest rate since he arrived. So does that suggest that he's trying to avoid being exposed by stepping out? Well, perhaps the numbers don't paint the fullest picture, but there is little doubt that Maguire needs to rebuild his confidence or change his new habit. So, where to go from here? Well, it's not clear, but these are long-term trends seemingly without a single solution. Buy holiday merch Buy a gift our merch Buy it now to avoid disappointment because of delivery time. Yes, that's right. Use the offer code TFOBF to get £10 off when you spend 60 And buy it now to avoid holiday disappointment at shop.tifofootball.com. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic brings you the best sports journalism in the world in a personalised experience, connecting you with the stories and teams that you care about the most. There's coverage of 13 sports, plus direct access to world-class journalists through live Q&As, discussions and podcasts. Not to mention, it's all ad-free. And you can try it now for free for 30 days by clicking the link in the description.